word of prayer. God, we lift up your name today and we tell you thank you for all you've done for us. We thank you, Lord God, for the ways you've made. We thank you, God, for the doors you've opened. We thank you, Lord God, for blessing us in spite of ourselves. Lord God, more, more, most importantly, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for the ability to have eternal life. Lord God, I say a special prayer this morning for the bereaved. I say a special prayer for those who are missing their loved ones today. How today has not been easy, but it's been a struggle. Lord God, I pray that you will bless them today. God, I pray that they'll know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal, that there's a church behind them praying for them and praying them through their struggle. Lord God, I am but a mortal man. So for those who I forget to speak or whose names I forget to, to call, Lord, I pray that you will forgive me, God, and you fill in the blanks. Now, God, we need to hear a word from heaven and not a word from Kevin. God, send your word today so that we might be transformed and changed. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would, please turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 19. John, chapter 19, and I'll be reading verses 38 and 39 of John, chapter 19. I have been extremely blessed today. Uh, not just at this service, but also with our 7 a.m. worship experience. Um, I thank God for this choir. I thank God for our young people. Amen. We praise God for them. Uh, Asia, God bless you. Wonderful job. Amen. Wonderful job. We praise God for you. Amen. And for, to uh, Diane Moore, God bless you. Awesome job. Amen. We praise God for you being used by the Lord today. Uh, John 19, verses 38 and 39, and I'll be reading from the New International Version. And it says there, later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who had earlier visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. I want to preach just a little while with your, with your prayers from the subject, I got a lot on me. Elbow your neighbor, tell him I got a lot on me. I got a lot. I got a lot on me. My, my brothers and sisters, uh, a young uh, a pastor who I have fond affection for, who I have watched as I have grown up, is a, part of, is a pastor I'm sure many of you know, uh, some of you may not, by the name of Pastor Isaiah Wadi. Uh, he and I share the same birthday, and uh, I admire his ministry and him, and his, and him as a pastor. Uh, pastor Wadi is the current pastor of St. Paul AME Church on Prior Road. And believe it or not, he used to be my presiding elder of what we used to call, I'm not sure if they still call it this, but it's called the Celebrated Central District of the Southwest Georgia Annual Conference. Um, one year during the annual conference, uh, uh, it was hosted in Donaldsonville, Georgia. That's the way down. South Georgia, at a church called Live Oak AME Church. Some of y'all know where that is. The city did not have Donaldsonville adequate hotels. It did not have adequate lodging. So I had to stay 45 minutes away in a, a small town called Dothan, Alabama. I was getting my things out of the car, and I was tired and frustrated from the drive that I had to make uh, to Dothan, Alabama from Donaldsonville. Uh, I had my book bag on my shoulders. I was just getting to, the, to check in the hotel. I had my book bag on my shoulders. I had a briefcase in my hand. I had a garment bag in, a, in another hand. 
and some grocery bags in another hand. I was loaded down, I was frustrated, and I was trying to get into my room. I had a whole lot of weight on me. And at that time, I'll never forget, my presiding elder, Pastor Isaiah Wadi, looked at me and he laughed and said, I see you're carrying what my grandmother calls a lazy load. <laughs> I, I looked in bewilderment and said, what's a lazy load? And he said jokingly with a grin on his face, that means you're loading yourself down with so much stuff because you're too lazy to get a few things, take it to the room, and come back and get a few more. My dear friends, I found out that a lot of us this morning are dealing with a lazy load because we ourselves don't take time to deal with one issue at a time. We take on a lot of challenges at one time, a lot of issues at one time, and we are putting more stuff on ourselves than we can bear. But then again, there are some of us in here this morning who are not necessarily dealing with a lazy load, but you're dealing with a load that life has thrown at you. We didn't put it on ourselves. We had nothing to do with this, but we're dealing with a whole lot of stuff right now. My dear friends, it's hard to pay attention when you're under a lot of tension. It's hard to give of yourself when there's not that much of yourself left to give. And I would dare say that there's somebody in here who's struggling under the sound of my voice with something that you're dealing with. You have a lot on your plate as a single mother trying to juggle career and children. You have a lot on your plate trying to go back to school and hold down a job and deal with a family. You have a lot that you're dealing with when you're trying to manage a marriage and trying to figure out what is your place in ministry. You got a lot under your scope and grasp trying to make sure that the balance in your checkbook stays in the black because in your checkbook, the red doesn't mean the blood. You got a lot on your plate, but not only that, you got a lot on your mind. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but have you ever been at the place when you've been at work and you, the screen is looking at you? You're not looking at the screen because you got a lot going on. I think it was the old blues singer who says, uh, your body's here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. There's a lot on your back when it is you can't find the peace to sleep at night. When you're tossing and turning, trying to figure out what is stretching you and what is stressing you. A whole lot of us, if we're honest, when we come to church, we don't have time to deal with foolishness and games and drama and problems and issues and, 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 and people talking about other people. Because to be honest with you, I got a whole lot on me right now. I don't care what my neighbor has on and I really don't have time to entertain who's been looking at who and who, if their hair is real or if their hair is fake or who's been rolling their eyes and who they like and who they don't like. I'm really not concerned about that be, uh, because uh, I didn't come for nothing else but for me so I can give God the glory. So if I'm clapping in your ear, if I'm shouting too loud, if I'm lifting up my hands and that gets on your nerves, I'm sorry. I have That has nothing to do with me. I'm just here to give God the praise. Don't play with me right now because I'm dealing with a whole lot of stuff. And because I'm dealing with a whole lot of stuff, I don't have time for a whole lot of other stuff. I just came to get this weight off of me so I can hear God in my life. My dear friends, there are some critical observations from this text that warrant our attention this morning. You must understand that Jesus has already been crucified. And Joseph of Arimathea has gone to Pontius Pilate begging for Jesus' body. He's begging for Jesus' body because he wants the, the privilege to lay down the body of Jesus in an appropriate way. 
But there's a small issue that is hardly ever examined or dealt with in the text ver- in the text uh, because uh, we hear the recur- reoccurrence of a faint man who came to Jesus by night because he was ashamed to go to him in public because he was a high ranking official. He was scared as to how people would perceive him. But watch what the Bible says in John 19, 13, that Nicodemus came back to Jesus and he brings 75 pounds of aloe and myrrh. A mortuary scientist will apprise you that to embalm anyone appropriately, you only need two pounds. You only need two pounds of aloe and myrrh to do the job of getting the body prepped for the burial of Jesus. But he brought 75. So 75, if we round that up to 100, is enough to bury 50 people. Much of the things that you're dealing with this morning is enough to bury a whole lot of other people. That's why the people on your row who are looking you up and down have no idea what you've been going through up to this point. So there are some of us who come to church not to show off our Easter clothes, not to get a phone number, not to be seen or noticed, but we come because we should have been dead. Because I should have been dead. I came to give God the glory. Is that anybody's testimony this morning that you have no business being alive, but God looked beyond your faults and he met you at your needs? My dear friends, the second thing that you'll notice is uh, that we really got to expose Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus for who they really are. They really did not believe that Jesus was going to rise from the dead. Reflection and evidence of this is that they brought 75 pounds of aloe and myrrh for aromatherapy. Listen to me clearly. They wanted to fill the tomb with a perfume fragrance to cover up the stench of decomposition and death. All that was needed was about two pounds, but they brought 75. They went overboard trying to cover up the dead areas. I wish I had time to preach about the people who come to church with church clothes on when all they're really doing is covering up that they're really dead inside. I wish I had the time to tell you this morning that Mac won't cover your low self-esteem. Clairol won't deal with your depression. But it's not until you're naked before God to say, God, here I am without one plea, wounded, worn, and sad. I want you to understand you got to be able to go before the Lord this morning and say, God, I got issues, I got drama, I got mess, but I don't care this morning if my mascara runs, I don't care if my hair sticks to my face, I don't care if I got to run in my stockings, even if I got to get ugly in the face of God, I know that if I I give him the praise and trust and believe that he'll fix it for me. Everything is going to be all right. Oh, my God. You got to understand that God really, really won't heal you uh, until God delivers you and you're able to acknowledge sometimes my stuff stinks. And not until you're at that place, uh, you will not be able to give God the praise or excuse me, get your healing because you are too comfortable in what you have and who you are in that mess. You got to understand, God, change my situation. God, I need you to fix me. God, I need you to make a way in my life. God, I need you to turn me around. It's the Bible that says it's a poor dog that returns to its own vomit. Oh, listen, I I, I got to understand. I got to, y'all got to help me to understand. I don't 
get it. How can God deliver you from a crazy Negro? And here you are talking about, I love them. Have you lost your mind? You ought to thank God for the season you got by yourself and say, listen, I've learned how to love me and value me and appreciate me. Oh my God, even if you don't like it, I love myself. I love who God created me to be. Oh my God, I feel like preaching, y'all. Uh, uh, you got to understand that um, archaeologists and theologians and historians alike will concur that at the time of Jesus' death, he weighed somewhere around 185 pounds. And watch what the Bible says that Nicodemus puts uh, 75 pounds of weight of aloe and myrrh on him. I want to suggest to you this morning that a lot of the weight you're carrying is not yours. A lot of the weight you're carrying this morning is trying to shoulder other people's issues, trying to handle other people's mess and other people's perception of you. But God says, if you, God says you're not going to resurrect until you stop trying to please other people and live up to their expectations and their standards of you you got enough weight on your own I can't carry my stuff and your stuff at the same time I can't deal with your drama and what I'm going through because I'm working through some stuff uh, he, he only weighs 185 pounds and they put 75 pounds of aloe and myrrh on him. Here's the painful part. It's not just one thing. The Bible says it's a mixture. Uh, it's kind of like the weight I was carrying uh, with that lazy load. It, it's not one load, but it's a lot of stuff. Uh, and some of you in here, you're dealing with a lot of stuff at one time. Uh, you're dealing with stuff in your family, stuff at your at, on your job. You, you're dealing with things going on in your bank account, things going on with your health. You're not just dealing with one thing. You're dealing with a whole lot of stuff at the same time. I want to want you to understand whenever you got issues and you're saved, you're never going to just deal with one thing. It's a combination of stuff. But don't you really how strong you are that the only way the enemy can get you is he got to try to throw a whole lot of stuff at you at one time you got to realize I must have some Holy Ghost power because if I wasn't this strong I wouldn't be going through this much and I want you to know God says I got you covered if you learn how to trust me he says my yoke is easy and my burden is light whatever you're carrying this morning just give it to God and watch him make a way way in your life. My dear friends, this passage of scripture, it disturbs the, the theology of deliverance because it says Nicodemus brought myrrh. The last time we saw myrrh was at the manger. I want you to understand that some of the stuff you were born with, you're going to die with. Uh, God says, I got to let you die with some stuff. I got to let you die to some stuff you've been carrying since your childhood. That's why some of us aren't adults. We're just grown teenagers. Uh, you, you have not matured into who you're supposed to be as a man or a woman of God, and you have neglected to put away childish things. Prove it to me, Pastor. You can only praise God. God, when your favorite choir is singing or when they're singing on key or if things going the way you want them to go or if somebody's singing your favorite song that gets you in the Holy Ghost mood. But when I'm an adult, oh, oh my God, I'll give God the praise when there's no music. All I need is a memory to say when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for for me. I, I'll praise him when I don't feel like it because I found out that when the praises go up, that's when the blessings 
come down. Oh, my God. Look at your neighbor and say, grow up, grow up, grow up. Oh, my God. Y'all scared this morning. Verse 40 says, they take the aloe and the myrrh and they put it on the linen cloth. The last place we see the linen cloth is in the book of Leviticus. You ought to put a linen ephod for the high priest who is going behind the veil. The linen ephod is only for those who are going into the sacred space into the holies of holies. We got an issue because Jesus is dressed to go behind the veil. He's dressed to go to the holies of holies, but they put aloe and myrrh on the sacred garment. Now, if you have on the linen ephod, it means that I am anointed and I'm set apart. But now that they've added aloe and myrrh to the sacred garment, it means the sacred garment is now contaminated. In other words, I can be anointed and still have issues. I can be anointed and still have stuff. It means that I can be anointed and the enemy can still mess with me, try to get me to fall short of the glory of God. But I want you to understand that just because you're anointed don't mean you won't struggle. As a matter of fact, because you are anointed, you're going to have to fight to stay stay saved. Now, some of you say straight up, Pastor Moore, I almost cut some people. I almost knocked somebody out. I almost did the wrong thing. But in spite of all of that, I'm still anointed. Can y'all help me preach real quick? If you feel like you're anointed, just just elbow your neighbor. Don't look at him. Tell him I'm still anointed. Oh, my God. Come on, elbow him. Say, I'm still anointed. Uh, you may know what I did. You may know what I used to do. Uh, but in spite of all of that, uh, still anointed. That's why you got to tell some people I don't care what you heard about me in the street because half of that is true. But no matter whether it's true or not, you still can't take my anointing away from me. I'm still anointed. God says I give my gifts with no repentance. The only people who are shocked that I messed up are those people who don't know what grace is. Uh, Grace means that he looks beyond my faults and he meets me at my needs. So it's not that I think I'm better than everybody else uh, because I know the me that you don't know. I don't have time to explain to you what I've been through. But all I can do is just thank God that he blesses me anyway. Jesus cares for you. He cares for me. And I know things may not be perfect. And I know you may be going through a lot on this Resurrection Sunday. And I know you got a lot on your plate. But I want you to know you're still anointed. You still got the power to change your life. God has given you the power to turn your situation upside down. I know you're going through a lot, but you're going to make it. You're going to survive. You're coming out of this. God says, I've given you the anointing. When they put Jesus in the tomb, they laced him with 75 pounds of aloe and myrrh that they put on his body. When Jesus gets up, uh, he gets up. Oh, my God. First, he has to lift up all the stuff that's on him. I want you to understand the reason why it's been so difficult for you to resurrect. uh, It's because of the stuff that's on you. I'm looking for those of you this morning. uh, uh, You got to muster a whole lot of strength. Uh, Oh, my God. You got to muster a whole lot of strength just to come to church. Uh, That it took you some effort. Uh, That there's some of us. uh, Oh, my God. We 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 do it like it's like we're light as a feather. We walk around. We floating around like everything is all good. Uh, But there's some of us in here today. You got a lot of weight that you're dealing with this morning. But can I tell you how you need to get that weight off of you? All you got to do is lift him up. 
up. And if you lift him up, you can lift the weight off of you. You can act like you ain't going through it. But if you're going through something this morning, lift him up. Lift him up. Still he speaks from eternity. And I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw a man unto me. Let me see how strong you are. Let me see how strong you are. The devil wants you to sit there. He don't want you to praise him. He don't want you to shout. He don't want you to give him glory. But is there anybody in the house who can say, Pastor Moore, I'm going through some stuff. I got a lot of weight on my shoulder. I'm dealing with it this morning. But I made up in my mind, in spite of the weight, that's on me. I'm going to lift. I'm going to lift him up. I dare you. Say, God, thank you. Thank you for the power to lift stress off of me. Thank you for the power to lift pain off of me. Thank you for the power to lift, to lift up the name. Hey, hey. Hey, I dare to say thank you, God. Hallelujah. Find the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Find the glory. Revive us. Revive us. Revive us. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, I dare to lift him. Lift him. I wonder who will help me lift Jesus. I wonder who will help me lift. Hey. Hey. Hallelujah. He's got aloe and myrrh on him. He's got aloe and myrrh on him, y'all. I'm gone. I'm out of here. He got aloe and myrrh on him, y'all. And what's so amazing about Jesus that I love, Brother Walton, what I love about him uh, is that uh, he practices what he preaches. Yes, he does. Uh, he does because you remember, uh, before, this is for my Bible readers, you will re remember uh, the man uh, who had been uh, Mr. 38. He's been by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. Uh, Jesus tells him, take up your bed and walk. Y'all remember that? Uh, he practices uh, what he preaches uh, because theologians, Brother Jones, uh, theologians find no evidence that when Jesus gets up uh, out of the tomb, uh, when he comes out of the tomb, there's no evidence of aloe or myrrh in the tomb. Oh, my God. So when he gets up out of the tomb, uh, he takes that stuff with him. And I want you to know this morning, whatever you came in the church carrying, whatever weight you got on this morning, God told me to let you know that if you give it to him, he'll take it with him. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that God can take my stuff, the stuff I've been trying to handle, the stuff my doctor been trying to deal with, the stuff my people been trying to handle. God says, I can take with me. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready for it? I thought this was Resurrection Sunday. Oh my God. I, th I thought this was Resurrection Sunday. We, we gone. Won't you stand up all over the sanctuary? We getting ready to get out of here. But I want you to know that I'm so glad that he died. But not only did he die, but he got up on Sunday morning. And he took my stuff with him. He took it with him. And I don't know about you, but I believe this morning beyond the shadow of a doubt. I believe without fear of contradiction. I believe this morning that whatever you came with. Listen to me clearly. Whatever you came with. This is not a regular Sunday. This is not a, a normal Sunday. Thank you. This Sunday is not like any other Sunday. This Sunday is a special Sunday. This Sunday, 
God can do it more than you can imagine. God can turn it around for you. God can fix it for you this morning. Hallelujah. The doors of the church are open.